Hello and welcome back to the channel everyone. In our last video, we had created a Kafka topic which had three partitions and we were running a producer which were, was producing messages into this Kafka topic. We also had started uh, many Kafka consumers or Kafka console consumers which were consuming the messages that were written into the Kafka topic, Kafka topic new. In this video, we will be exploring Kafka consumers or Kafka console consumers, but those consumers will be made to work in a consumer group. So now would be a great time to subscribe the channel if you have not already. And let's quickly get started. So as you can see on my screen, I still have the output from the previous video uh, where we had created four Kafka console consumers. Now I am going to modify all four of these consumers to make them work as part of a consumer group, which we will name as CG1. So as you can see here now, uh, we have the exact same command that we used before, which is Kafka console consumer.sh. We specify the bootstrap server. We specify the name of the topic. And with that, we specify one more option, which is the hyphen hyphen group option. And we specify the name of the group and that is what has been done in all four terminals here. Uh, so let's quickly run them one by one. So I run this here, 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 and here. All right, so let me head back over to the producer screen and let's start producing some messages. So um, um, let this be uh, CG11, uh, CG12, CG13, CG14, CG15, CG16, and so on. So you can see uh, that since now our consumers are working in a group, uh, all of the consumers are not consuming all of the messages that we send to the Kafka broker or that we produce in the Kafka topic. Uh, like uh, this first consumer is uh, has consumed uh, these two messages. Uh, this consumer has consumed the, these two messages and this consumer has consumed these two messages and this consumer has not consumed any messages at all. Let us see what happens when we produce a few more messages. Yeah, and I think so that will be okay. So as you can still see that the fourth consumer does not consume any of the messages. Now, what is exactly going on here? So uh, one thing that you should remember about uh, this particular Kafka topic of ours is that this topic has three partitions. Now, please do make note of the fact that one partition can only be read by a single consumer within a consumer group. But in this consumer group, since we have four consumers, then one consumer will always be idle because all of these partitions 0, 1 and 2 have already been assigned to uh, let's say consumer 1, consumer 2 and consumer 3. One more time, I would like to repeat that this topic has three partitions and one partition can only be read by one consumer in a consumer group. And that is why our fourth consumer is always sitting, sitting idle. Now, what happens when, let's say, we decided to stop one of the consumers? Um, maybe this one. Okay. And now, if we produce some messages into this Kafka topic, C21, C22, C23. Well, we can see that these messages have already been distributed amongst the other Kafka consumers. Uh, all right. So at this point of time, I want to stop uh, this consumer as well and produce a few more messages. And as we can see on the screen this time also that all of our partitions have again been divided amongst these two working consumers as of now. So what is this signifying in this case? Uh, well, this is signifying that one consumer can read from more than one partition for a topic. 
And just to summarize the major things, the, the two major points that we have learned till now in this video, uh, I have written these two points here. So the first point is that one partition for a topic can only be read by one consumer in a consumer group. And the second point being that one consumer in a consumer group can read more than one partitions for a given topic. These two are different things. So please do pay attention to that. Practice this on your own in your own system. And this will be very clear to you. All right. So now I have shut down all of my Kafka consumers and also demultiplex my terminal into a single terminal. Now I'm going to show you a way in which we can get more information about our Kafka consumer groups. So let me simply type a command here. So this is Kafka consumer groups dot sh. We specify the bootstrap server and then we give one option minus minus list. Actually, if I run it without the minus minus list option, it would actually give me all of the options that I could use with the script. So let us run it with minus minus list. And uh, there you see that we have one uh, consumer group as of now, whose name is CG1. Now, uh, suppose we want more detailed information about the consumer group CG1, then uh, we can use the minus minus describe option in which we specify the group name, which is CG1. I hit enter. And there you have it. Uh, we have some more information about the consumer group one uh, right here. Uh, so this is the name of the group. Uh, this is the topic uh, from which the members of these group uh, consume information. Next, you can see um, each partition for um, this topic, Kafka topic new. We all know that this has three partitions. We can see uh, the current offset. The current offset actually uh, specifies the point up to which the messages within this partition, uh, partition uh, two in this case, of this Kafka topic have been read. And the log and offset uh, specifies the offset of the last message in this partition of this particular Kafka topic. So you might remember when we started discussion about the basic concepts of Kafka, we discussed topic partition as well as offset. So lag is simply the difference between the log and offset and the current offset. Now to show you, suppose um, um, I have, I still have the Kafka console producer open, which is writing to this same topic that um, we have here. So if I say produce uh, a couple of more messages here, this time I'll keep it very simple. I produce a few more messages here. And if I run this same command here uh, again, uh, well, you can see that the log and offsets have moved forward. So how many messages did we produce here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And if we see the lag, we have a lag of exactly nine messages because these nine messages have not been consumed by any consumer within uh, the consumer group CG1. And um, if I just show you uh, to differentiate it from the previous output, we can see earlier there was no lag, but now we have a lag of nine messages right here. All right, uh, let's do one thing. Let's quickly spin up a Kafka console consumer here, which is part of consumer group CG1. And we can see that it has consumed these uh, nine messages that uh, we just sent here. And if we run this command now, the description command for the consumer group, uh, we see that there is no lag now because all of the messages um, have been consumed. And apart from that, we can also see more information in the last column. Uh, so here we saw that uh, consumer ID, host and client ID were empty and we got a message that consumer group CG1 has no active members. Now that was because at the point of time uh, when we actually ran this command, none of the consumers in CG1 were active. But now we see that uh, one consumer in the group CG1 is active. So we can see that um, all of these three partitions are being consumed by the consumer CG1. Um, um, what we'll do next is we will start one more uh, Kafka consumer, which will consume topics. Uh, messages from uh, Kafka topic new. I hit enter and uh, the consumer will start. And when I describe the group CG1 now, so what do we see here? Uh, we see that one more consumer has been introduced um, 
in our consumer group. So we have two consumers which are recognized by their consumer IDs. You can see the difference here. We have 119 here and 681 here. Whereas when we ran the command previously, when we had only one consumer in consumer group CG1, we had the same ID signifying that we have only one consumer in this consumer group at this point of time. Whereas now it is easy to see that we have two consumers. If I uh, spin up one more consumer in the consumer group CG1, we can see that all three consumer IDs will be different. Uh, maybe you can try that as homework. And that's it, guys. That's all we had to discuss about Kafka consumer groups. And I hope that all of these examples have made the concepts of Kafka consumer group very clear for you. If not, I am sure that they will be once you try these examples on your own as well. So if you like the content of the video, please do hit the like button. If you like the content of my channel, please click subscribe. You can hit the bell icon to never miss any new updates. Like always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you very soon in a brand new tutorial.